Next up, we are joined by Justus Hammer, the CEO of Mad Paws with the ticker code MPA. To tell us more about their marketplace for pet services and related products, I will hand you over to Justus. Good afternoon, Justus. Good to see you again. Hey, Jane. How are you? Great. Let me bring up your presentation. Perfect. All right. Um, yeah. Thanks for thanks for having me. And um, I'm going to run you through uh, a little bit uh, more about Mad Paws and what we do. So we're Australia's number one tech-enabled uh, pet marketplace. So we really exist to enable pets to live their life uh, to the fullest, and we're striving to be the most trusted and convenient brand to rely on for all pet-related needs. Now, that's obviously you know, a big goal, but I think we're uh, on the way. And um, over the last couple of years, we've really focused on building not only Australia's number one pet services marketplace, um, where you find over 35,000 local pet sitters who provide personal five-star services like pet sitting, walking, um, or daycare. But uh, we've also expanded into new verticals, uh, especially over the last two years since the IPO um, of the business in March last year. So as you can see on the right-hand side, um, we've been steadily uh, growing um, significantly in the last quarter because we added a pet chemist as a business, but we're now sitting at over 260,000 um, paying customers and we accumulated over 558,000 bookings. Um, and all that, um, we've also been able to partner with iconic brands like Qantas to grow the brand and reach even more customers. And I think that strategy over the last couple of years has now really resulted in significant growth um, for the business. We've achieved over $10 million uh, in revenue and over $27 million in GMV. And if we look at it from a, a group perspective, so from a performer perspective, taking um, uh, our pet chemist acquisition into account, you can see on the right-hand side, the group achieved uh, $15.4 million in revenue um, and 37, point, uh, 37 million in GMV on a performer basis. So really getting to scale um, and that gives us a lot more options going forward. And I'll tell you a little bit more now um, also about our strategy uh, and what we wanna do. Now, you know, we, we're, we've heard a lot about um, uh, interesting industries, but I think we're certainly in one of the uh, uh, most feel-good categories you can be on. Um, and uh, it's not just a feel-good one in terms of we're talking about pets and, uh, you know, pets are certainly uh, part of the family now. Um, but we're also talking about one of the industries um, uh, which has been, which has seen the, the highest growth. So that the pet industry has been growing not just before COVID, um, but since then it has really accelerated. In Australia, more than 50% of households now have at least one pet and they are um, really part of the family, as I said before. And because of that, um, that change in the relationship to the pets, we've not um, only seen the number of pets skyrocketing, we've also seen that pet owners are spending significantly more on their pets. Uh, it's not about um, feeding your pet anymore, it is really about uh, feeding them as healthy as you would feed your own family, uh, making sure that they're happy, healthy, uh, and that they live for as long as uh, possible. One of the other big advantages for our industry, uh, especially in times like today, is that the pet industry is very res recession um, resilient. Uh, once you have a pet, you know people tend to keep spending on those pets, um, and uh, those pets are most certainly not going away. Uh, so, you know, and, and particularly in the times that we're seeing now where there's uh, some questions around um, uh, um, uh, 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 consumer spending, I think we're in a, in a very safe space uh, and with the, with the growth that we've seen, um, not just from a number, but also from the amount uh, that people are spending on pets, I think we're in a, in a very exciting space that's going to see um, continuous growth over the next couple of years. And so on this slide, it really shows you the extent of the growth that we've seen in the pet industry. Um, cat ownership is up over 30% now uh, from the beginning of uh, the, the uh, COVID pandemic and dogs are up uh, 24%. And you can see that people are now spending a significant amount of money per year on their, on their pets, uh, over $3,200 on dogs and over $2,000 on, uh, on their cats per year. Um, so that really, that has grown significantly over the last couple of years and, and again underlines that kind of humanization that we're always talking about 
um, and that uh, bring in um, uh, um, the pets from kind of your front yard into the house, um, which has all kinds of effect, which is obviously very positive for us, and which has now resulted in the pet industry being an industry worth um, $30 billion. Um, so it's a very, very significant industry uh, and growing very, very nicely. And so this slide kind of really shows you um, um, where we want to play. You know, MadPost wants to provide quality products and services um, that make not just the life of the pet owner better, but obviously also their pets. And, and a pet owner has a lot of needs, as you can see on this slide. So, you know, it starts from the very left with kind of research when you're trying to think about um, uh, having a pet to planning, um, health, food, um, all kind of the services in terms of training, exercise, um, minding, but then obviously also entertainment, uh, toys, as well as uh, age care and passing of the, of the pet. And, um, and we are really kind of providing already um, uh, products and services in those areas. As you can, we've got sash beds uh, in the uh, curated e-commerce space. We've got pet chemists um, in the uh, healthcare space. We're providing prescription and over-the-counter medi um, medication. We've got dinner bowl with our raw kibble and lightly cooked um, offerings, as well as Wagley, uh, which is our toys and uh, treat subscription service. And um, the core offering, still the biggest part of the business is Mad Paws, uh, where we provide pet sitting, daycare, dog walking and house um, visits. And we're not just playing in those spaces, as you can see on the bottom, we're actually also winning in those spaces. Um, you know, Mad Paws, uh, the by far the number one pet services marketplace in Australia. Um, we've got Dinner Ball, which is the top rated dog food subscription in Australia. We've got Pet Chemist, um, which is the one, number one online pharmacy for pets uh, in Australia. And we've got really high growth businesses with Wagley and Sash Beds, um, where we're excited about the future growth and um, opportunity for the business. But I wanna to touch a little bit about um, kind of why we're excited about adding additional verticals um, to the core business. And if you go to the next slide, you can see that um, here, this is really kind of the flywheel that we're trying to build. Um, so this is not about building um, uh, individual brands that are standalone, really great businesses. Where we see the real acceleration of the business is by being smart and how we can how we integrate those businesses, how we integrate those brands, um, uh, uh, and using data to um, being better in providing the right services and products to our customers, and therefore obviously also reducing the cost of acquiring customers by cross-selling the customers between uh, the, 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 um, the diff different verticals that we're offering now. And so, you know, that flywheel uh, works quite uh, nicely now. We're seeing um, the first effects of this working where we're seeing more owners on the platform, which generates um, word of mouth and brand ad advocacy, which obviously generates more bookings. And then, you know, the most essential part and kind of why we think this is work is data. We're generating a lot of data, um, not just about the pet owners, but also about the pets. And this is not just that we know, you know, the name of your dog, um, but we know, you know, how old they are, we know their breed. Uh, with pet chemists, we know some of the medical conditions, for example. Um, with uh, with um, uh, dinner ball, we have information about the weight, the activity, and so forth. And all that helps us to, uh, again, kind of find better matches, not just from a pet sitting perspective, but also from a offer perspective and from a product perspective. And, um, you know, that is what we've been focusing on um, over the last couple of months, building that kind of data layer to make sure that we are in a position to um, drive customer acquisition at a much better um, and lower CAC than uh, individual standalone business could do that. You can see that this is working now um, because we're really seeing some of our kind of key metrics that we're tracking. So from a marketing um, uh, uh, cost perspective, operating expense as a percentage of revenue, all those metrics are gone down, which is obviously what you want to see. Um, so we're spending a lot less um, money per dollar revenue on marketing as well as operating expenses, while at the same time, you can see on the right hand side, um, revenues are going significantly up. Um, 
So just a couple of um, points about the quarterly performance. So um, like I said before, we're really kind of achieving scale now. Uh, we've got a quarterly GMV in, uh, uh, of 11.4 million and uh, a group operating revenue of 4.6 million. So, you know, we've seen significant um, uh, uh, growth here. And this was driven essentially by the two parts of our business. One is the marketplace business. You can see some of the drops there, particularly in Q4 2020 and Q1 22, which were driven by um, COVID, where travel was obviously um, coming to a halt. But since then, we've seen um, you know, significant growth. Marketplace is going from strength to strength. We had um, record months just uh, uh, in June. So um, we're seeing a lot more potential for that marketplace to grow even further with coming into our strong strongest months, which is normally Q1 and Q2. Um, uh, going into the, the uh, winter holidays, uh, sorry, the summer holidays uh, and Christmas holidays. And the e-commerce business, you can see, is becoming a much more significant part of our business. Um, the big jump in um, uh, Q4 22 was the addition of Pet Chemist, which we acquired um, at the beginning of that quarter. Yeah, and with that, um, I just want to finish on... Um, uh, I hope I was uh, telling you about the tailwinds that we've seen for our business, um, you know, pet ownership through the roof, uh, um, the whole double whammy effect in terms of more pets, but also people spending more on their pets, um, driven by the humanization and premiumization. Um, it's a huge industry that we're very excited about uh, expanding further into. And um, uh, we're seeing, you know, all the things that we've been talking about over the last couple of quarters uh, in terms of the pent up demand for our, for our core business, MadPost um, services, really kind of paying, playing out. Um, people are traveling again. We've seen um, uh, record um, numbers in terms of average GMV per booking, um, as well as the number of bookings per customer. So, all that is kind of working out uh, nicely and we're in a very good position to execute on, on our strategy with uh, still having $5.6 million in cash um, uh, in the bank at the end of June. Um, so that gives us enough um, breathing space to work on the, the businesses that we have now, um, integrate them even closer, make sure that that flywheel I've been talking about um, is spinning faster and faster and um, then we're obviously looking to expand at some stage, uh, potentially into other verticals to, um, to find even more growth and, and provide uh, even, even more and better products and services to the customers that we already have on the platform. And with that, um, I'm happy to take some questions. Yes, just thank you for the great presentation. As always, we love having you on Broker Briefing. Uh, we have had quite a few questions that have come through, so let me jump into them. Sure. Uh, so is Matt Pulse looking to expand overseas? And if so, what would the strategy be uh, around this? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, we've got a we've got a, a great opportunity, particularly for the marketplace uh, and some of our other businesses to expand geographically. Um, now, you know, just where the market is at at the moment and kind of what we're focused on, we're very much focused on um, profitability and driving uh, you know, the business that we've built now and the ecosystem that we've built now and making sure that that's as, as efficient as possible. So, um, you know, from a timing perspective, you know, that's not something we're going to we're going to start doing probably in the next quarter, but it's certainly something that's in the in the kind of um, uh, in, the, in the closer horizon. Um, and it's just a decision then on kind of how much how much do we want to invest uh, in growth again. So, you know, the nice thing at the moment is Marketplace as a standalone business is already um, profitable and we're working on kind of the other verticals to get there too. That's kind of our prior priority at the moment and we're, we're achieving that while still um, showing very nice growth um, for, for all parts of the business. Um, but, you know, once the market um, changes a little bit, we're obviously looking to accelerate that growth and geographic expansion is one, one option that we're looking at. Well, just further than that then, there's a question that's come through just about getting a strategic involved. Um, so someone perhaps in the travel industry or online web um, would now be a good time for that particular strategic investment? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're always um, open and looking um, at strategics. We've, we've uh, obviously brought Qantas on board um, fairly early, uh, which was great for us, not just from a 
customer acquisition perspective, but also from a from a trust perspective, right? Um, mark, building marketplaces is very much about building trust and building trust with our customers. So, um, absolutely, it's a it's it's something that helps us, um, you know, from a from a profitability perspective as well. We find the right strategic. Um, so it's something we're 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 uh, always closely considering. Okay, and another one that's popped up. So, what revenue stream is management most excited about? Well, I think it's it's really the combination of the ecosystem that we've built now. So, um, you know, the marketplace is doing really well. Uh, we've got, um, like I said, marketplace as a standalone business now profitable, um, and we see kind of that that cross sell really taking off. Um, I think one of the businesses that we've seen, you know, significant growth now is has been Wagley. Um, you know, where all the team's done, you know, incredible job and, and worked really hard on making sure that we get that to the level where, you know, the CAC, so customer acquisition cost is low enough and we see enough um, uh, new customers coming through for that really to take off. Um, and that's probably one where we've seen, uh, you know, the, the, the biggest amount of, of improvements, um, where we're now in a position to really scale that business um, with uh, still a very, very good um, cash profile. We get that money back very quickly because we're acquiring customers at a, at a CAC now that's lower than ever before, while still acquiring more customers than we have ever before. So, you know, that's probably one um, where we've really kind of seen a breakthrough in terms of, in terms of growth. Um, over the last month or two. Uh, well, Justus, that's all we have time for today. I am looking forward to seeing the new numbers, given that everyone seems to be traveling on holidays at the moment. So um, thank you for joining us on Broker Briefing. We look forward to hearing further updates. Thanks so much for having me.